Hi everyone. Uh, I'm just uh, the f just finishing off this box. Uh, box of flies. If hopefully you can see. It okay, that'd be better. Uh, it's basically just a selection of uh, flies I would mainly have in the winter months down to about here. Uh, but just the, the the last row, I'm gonna put in some uh, some wet flies. Now the one I'm tying is obviously this is a March brown. It's just. Uh, quite a light wing version. Uh, I always like a lighter wing. Uh, when you're tying, one of the main colours you would use would be this is a hen pheasant, would be the dark side, but there's a lighter side that works I like. So it's worthwhile tying some of the, the, the softer side, it's easy to tie on, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great fly to tie. Now, obviously, I have um, videos on the March Brown, but uh, it's they they getting a bit grainy with the, the old age, so I'll just I'll, I'll film it again so you can see it now. Uh, you can tie. It. I'm using the Piezo silk. I'm going to show it before I start. Now you can use it either yellow or orange. Uh, I've caught in both, and it's worth tying the same fly but using the yellow thread as much as the the orange. Now I'm going to tie it with the orange thread. Uh, so what we're going to do is come in a wee bit closer, obviously, make it easier for you to see. Now, the fly is basically, it's, it's quite simple to tie uh, overall. The th trick about using piezo silk is it's heavy. This is old silk. This is the gossamer silk. Uh, this here must be, oh, I don't know how old this spool is. But the wooden spools go far back. If you don't you want to use, obviously, piezos or a, a silk itself, uh, just use uh, just a normal thread, just a hot orange thread uh, or a yellow thread a uni or something like that. Uh, now I have a, I'll quickly jump over here. Now a question I do get asked, if you can't get the piezo silk, what, what would you use? Now, this is, uh, show here. this is a yellow, I would quib it's equivalent to uh, the modern, this is a modern spool anyway, but this is, it's called, you can see, Yali thread, uh, silk thread, 200 meter spools. Uh, so basically, that's 214. Obviously, that's the number of code for that. This is a, a natural, it's a silk, very nice, perfect, kind of primrosey color. Uh, it's basically, you can always can see again, you have used it, uh, and it's from Japan. Uh, you can stick it on the bobbin. I mean, I have, as you can see, I've actually uh, used it, I've had the bobbin on it because I can still tie with it. You know something, I may do that, just to show you. Because uh, I've got the orange one there, I may as well tie the yellow one. So, seeing I've picked this out. These are questions I got asked now, I can get it to fit. It's not perfect, I'm not going to bend my... Uh, what do you call it? My bobbin holder to suit it, but I can work around it. It should flow nice and smooth from the, the bobbin. But I can work with it. So anyway, there we are, so I'm just going to pull out a length. Obviously, probably wax silk. You have to wax it. Now I'm just going to level this this here a couple of wee bit. And what I'm going to do here is basically start say about uh, a head length away from the eye. I'm just going to work my way down. Now normally this would flow nice and smooth from the bobbin. I'm, I'm encouraging it to. Uh, I'm pulling it off, obviously. And basically, if you want it to, oops, not well, you don't want it to snap. The more it, it slides away or runs smoothly, it doesn't run on the one area. Uh, if it runs, if you wind a bobbin down to get smaller and smaller or closer to the hook, you're winding on the same piece of thread. And by doing that, you you wear it. So that's where m most times it snaps. But uh, it's fine. This is a ceramic bobbin hold. It's nice and smooth. Now I've got some bronze mallard tail fibers. I just want these for the tail, so I'm going to bring out a few fibers. Make the ends line up. I'm just going to roll it just within my fingers. And that's how it slightly opens the fiber, gets them to sort of put some life in them. Now a good length in the, the March Brown. So don't be shy with it. At least the hook length. A couple of turns to catch it in. Trim. Now what I'm going to do is here, this is a gold tinsel, just a small gold tinsel, and you catch it on the length of the body. 
And then I'm going to use a blend. This is just a blend that I use. It's hair's mask and the uh, fox squirrel, red fox, uh, just blend it together. It gives you a really rough type of dubbing. I just blend it in a coffee grinder. I'm going to lightly dub it onto the thread, push it up towards the body, and then sort of twist to that because that's like an anchor point. And then we can wind up nice and tight. So you take this right up. Now I'm going to. A couple of questions I get asked is about adding a throw or winding a hackle. Or like uh, like when you're buying certain feathers, you get more use out of them. And uh, some of the bigger feathers I get in the partridge uh, skin, uh, you can break them into two. So I'm just finishing it off quite close, or a head length away. I'm going to bring the rib up. So you're only about five tons. Stroke back these fibers, and then use the tinsel basically to hold them back in a thread turn. If it's not going to do that, just draw it back two or three turns in. Now I'm going to use an old pair of scissors to cut the tinsel. You can bend and break it off if you want. Now I'm just going to wax my thread. Oops. Just rub it with my finger here just to take the excess off. Have a wee quick look, see how the body is. If you want to lift out some of the fibre, I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to, it's a wee bit flat, so put a wee bit of life into it. Just take your thread out of the way when you're brushing it with the velcro, because if you catch the thread, it will snap. Or it will fray it at least. There's one fibre down here, I'm going to trim it away. Now, in the larger feathers, the, this is off the, the English uh, partridge, these large feathers here. If we wind it, it'd be too long. So what I do is, just take away the fluff. Take out enough, take out the stem, centre of the stem here, so you've got right on the left side, a fibre. Keep this, you can wind that in the top, if you want, or just put it on as a throw. Like this here, what I'm going to do, See the natural curve is coming round, so I'm going to offer it to the length I want, and then just check it. So bringing it in, then holding it with your finger and thumb either side of the shank. And then we come round with a couple of turns, just to hold it. And there it gives you a nice throat. If you want more of the fibre to come down, you can obviously move it at this point. Yeah, well, that'll do it. Do another turn to make sure it's or two just to make sure it's not going to move. Now this by doing this you get you've got to make sure you can kind of trim this uh, because you don't want any fibre hanging over the eye. So just take your time. I'm using a fine pair of scissors here. Just take your time and trimming these away. And there we are. Now, so I'm going to straight in and wing it. So, as I say, I'm going to use the softer side of these feathers, not the, the, the nice strong colour. I, mean, I want the thinner, the finer, softer fibre uh, on either side. You need a right and a left. And all I do is just pull a slip off. Just a wee bit, look at it. A wee bit too much there. You can always pull it off. Just what I'm doing here is just lining up the fibres. Just check the best part. There's a wee twist in these up here. So I'm going to take away two or three. Bring it back together. That's a wee bit of it. This one here, take away the twisted fibre there. Again, bring it out. So I check my length. At this point, you can always spend a bit of time. So Bring it out the way you like before you tear it off. So we've got the right and the left. Obviously, the good side, the well coloured side, and the outside. Now I'm just bringing these ends together. Now just bring them in either side of the hook and then hold them. At this point, you can check the tips, see if they're lined up. It's fine. Length is where I like, just the back of the hook. Just hold it. 
the natural curve of these fibres will slightly come away from the hook. Then we want to pinch and loop, just allow the thread turn to come through your fingers. Do it again. And a, just a single one, just to see how things are sitting. Because you know, we can always go back. Now, it's not sitting perfect for me, so I'm going to go back. Second time round, it always sits, I find, sits better. Again, just position them again. You've got that crease in the feather. Pinch and loop, another one, a couple of turns here just to secure it. A wee quick look. Now the March Brown's a big fly, so March Brown's got a wing length, they've got around about an inch. So I'm ready to trim away and now see that trimmed. Now the first thing I do is wax. Now you then bring the thread to the front. And then we work up from there into the cut ends and basically what you're doing is it ties in far better and it's you're building up the head from the front a step of thread and then when we want to whip finish just come through obviously what's this a I've tied it with a yellow silk whip finish there's a wee bit of fluff there tighten up off and trim off, sorry, and there we go. And that's the I'll get the the orange version, obviously, with the orange silk. Uh, changes the colour, I mean, it lightens it slightly up, it's amazing. The, you'll see the yellow in these flies. I mean, that's the wings, nice, that's a nice shape. And then all we have to do, once you start to cast this, uh, the wing starts to slightly. Uh, not so much come apart, but basically get into a nicer shape, I actually feel, once you start to fish it. Just a wee bit of varnish on the head. All the way around. And there we are. Two or three questions in there, obviously. About how to use, how to use a beard, how to tie in and use up the, the longer hackles. Obviously everybody asks about the wing, and then obviously they ask about an alternative to the, uh, we've got the piezo salt, and we've got the yali salt, which is, when you see, it's a big spool. If I wanted, I would just spool this into a, a, an old spool to make it easier, to, especially if you had bobbin holder. Uh, but it, I manage, I manage it, but lots of ways. Some nice colours with that company. Uh, if you just do a search online, and you'll see the, the yali salt, uh, you'll see how... Uh, the colours that you can buy, and compare it basically to the the, the salts you they originally used. And you, and they're actually a very good. I mean, they're. I think the last time I bought these, they were around about six pounds a spool. But you're getting, was it two hundred meters? Uh, oh, two hundred meters of of salt, which is when the the these ones you had fifty yards the old ones, <laughs> so you get a lot of salt for your money, and uh, so there we are, so I hope you enjoyed that, uh, again, it's just a simple fly, it's just a good all round park for both locks and rivers, uh, the March Brown is one of the first flies to come off uh, at the beginning of the season, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and again, thank you for watching.